My drive is, is pretty much the win. It always pushes you. You know your limits, but you never listen to them sometimes. You just want to keep improving. And sometimes it's not going to go all your way, but you always think about the next time, you know? Ultimately, every time you get in the car, as long as you're thinking about how you can get better, how you can improve, that's, that's kind of what the drive is. Racing's all about the pure pleasure of driving something just completely flat out. You're doing, I suppose, top speeds plus 320 kilometers an hour. But yeah, at the time, nothing's a rush, I suppose. It's kind of hard to describe. It's, um, you, yeah, you feel like you're part of it. You're part of the car. You know, you're telling it what to do and it's telling you what it wants and what it doesn't want. You know, it's kind of... Yeah, because you're strapped into it, you know? You feel everything, you know, the the tyres, the chassis, the engine, you know? The gearbox is telling you loads of little things. I think the moment you start rushing and panicking is when you're missing all the little details that you should have been picking up, and then that's when you can make a mistake. And yeah, it can be great disappointment. And I used to be bad at carrying that for a long time, like, if it didn't go right, you know, it didn't go my way, but I don't like to dwell on the negatives these days, you know. I don't know, I like just to come home and kind of switch off, go and ride my bike, clear my mind and just need that kind of, that split. Racing's been my life since uh, I was eight years old. My dad took me to like a local go-kart place. He kind of got me into it and then he was, you know, my go-to guy. He was my mechanic, my dad, my coach, kind of everything, you know. I know he's proud, yeah. He might say different when he comes around, but... <laughs> oh, Pops? Pull the old banger over. Yeah. Yeah. You right? You good? Yeah. yeah. Very good. What have you got with you? Got some pictures of you. God, these are old. 24 years ago. Here's Lewis Hamilton. Mine. Yeah. I think Lewis must have been 10, was he? There was a big bunch of talented drivers all came up at the same time. The first time you ever went in a go-kart, you were flying. I suppose we were a little team, though, weren't we? Well, we were. Yeah, and he'd be there on the side of the track with the stopwatch, you know doing the averages all the way around, and you'd be coming past looking at him. <laughs> all you wanted was like a bit of, you know, encouragement, like a thumbs up or something. If you didn't get a thumbs up, then you knew you weren't doing well enough, so. So that was good. That kind of taught you well. But we got there in the end, didn't we? Mm, yep. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it's all about perseverance, isn't it? Yeah. You gotta be in it to win it, that's for sure. There was a bit of a backdraft. You know, when Mike had his big accident at IndyCar, at the Indy 500, you think, I'm not sure I'm gonna see this anymore. But that was the only moment I think I ever thought, you should never go racing again. I bet. I know, yeah. That was a scary moment. Mm. I'm so lucky to have survived that crash. The biggest one I had, yeah, was Indy 500 in 2010. I had enough fuel to go at the end and all the cars in front of me didn't. So came into like turn three, was behind Ryan Hunter Ray. And I clipped his back wheel and yeah, as soon as you're, I was airborne, I was like, oh shit. 
then it's kind of down to the the gods, I suppose, of how you're going to be coming out of that one. But still here now talking about it. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know. But then the next day, I was already asking the doctor when I can get back in a car. So I never doubted really uh, the ability to get back behind the wheel. Well, actually, when I got back to Indy the year after, I didn't feel 100% comfortable and I didn't, just the car didn't feel right. <clears throat> Maybe that was a mental thing, I don't know. I just felt like it was just too much risk. Maybe I should not do this style anymore of, of racing. So that was a tough, tough decision. Hello and welcome to Spa Francorchamps for the start of the FIA World Endurance season, the super season. I look back on it now and um, I think it was probably the best decision I ever made because it opened up my eyes to all the sports car racing and uh, I just really enjoy where I am at the moment. The number seven set the fastest laps of all, but a discrepancy with their fuel flow measuring equipment means that they have been penalised. They will start the race not from pole position, but from the pit lane, a lap after the rest of the field. Yeah, no, I definitely don't see the crash as a negative, really. I think it changed me as a driver for the better. You know, mentally, just being stronger. Red lights are on as they charge to the line. We are green for the start of the total six hours of Spa-Francorchamps. Mike Conway starts to make his preparations. Car won't be rolled out of the garage until pretty much the leaders are coming towards the end of the first racing lap. about winning but when you're racing for uh, you know Toyota and and it's a two-car effort you can't be just totally single-minded and just out for yourself you know you've got to be thinking about the big picture I would have loved to come away for the weekend with the story that we came from a lap down and won the race would have been amazing I'd have been you know on cloud nine since uh, since then We didn't do it, but we still came really close. To come back from where we did, to get to where we were, was a great achievement by the whole team. A one-two for the team is what we want as well for the rest of the year. So the fact that I'm a little bit disappointed is only motivation for the next one. On to the big one now, to Le Mans.